shift gears. Same thing for all our teachers, but we make it more exciting, more like game-like action for the uh, players, for the students. We, everything is done with pucks. Pucks all the time, shooting at six different nets. Only now we add grip, okay, roll the wrist, carry the puck, and thinking to our list of teaching things to the students. Works great. One of the best things we do. We've gone through this before, that the shifting of weight adds to speed. And I, I won't skate, okay, but I, I'll stand there and I'll just rock back and forth and keep my skate straight. Now as I widen, okay, my feet, I lower my center of gravity. When I lower my center of gravity, look at So, when you're going around a pylon, first of all, you skate to it. You stride and you glide and you go around two feet and sit. You push with the heel. Hey, fellas, when you go around these pylons, how do you go around? If you go around a pylon like this? No. What? No! You sure? Around a pylon like this. That's good. Oh. You sure about that, fellas? Yeah. Is this how you go around a pylon? Yeah. Remember we did push with the heel drill? Well, remember that one? Yeah. It's the same thing when you go around the pylon. As soon as you get even with it, you sit down and push with the heel. Look how slow I go to the pylon and how fast I leave it. Relax. Sit down and push with the heel. Got it? Got it! Another reason why we cut your sticks off really low below the chin is because you can tuck your stick underneath your tummy. Okay? Now if your stick is that long, there's no way you can do this. Just tuck your stick underneath and sit down and push. Okay? So that pylon is not a pylon, it's a defenseman. So when I get next to him, Okay, sit down. See where I got my stick? Notice Mike's full blade is always on the ice. The puck can't go under the toe of the heel. Twelve inches of blade on the ice. The only thing that makes sense. Over the years, we've had uh, young ladies, mothers, and grandmothers, uh, teenagers, young men, fathers, uh, and, and many of whom had never played the game of hockey become excellent teachers, just great teachers. But they all believe in going one-on-one -on -one with the student, making it happen right under your nose. Both parties have to be there. Here, we'll show you how it's done. Okay, first time out, both skates on the ice with a puck. Second time out, skate. Third time, forwards, backwards. Fourth time, backwards. We'll if you teach skating balance drills for any longer than 45 minutes, you lose both the student and the teacher. So we put together three skating and puck handling drills, the two foot stop, the jumps, and this the weave. A normal class is approximately 55 skaters. By the third day, we often have 40 on the course. There is very little waiting time at the four or six gates. We add puck handling and thinking skills to the balance and foot skills and expose the student's performance level to every teacher. Watch Jamal here. Watch the puck in his stick. His stick is way too long, the puck right under the toe. Did I give it to him? This happens most times to kids and pros with sticks too long. <laughs> We're showing you the skating drills we do on the course. Cerise and others did push with the heel. The two foot slide, one, two, three, around the pylon and backwards with the puck. Isn't she something else? Goalies carry the puck for all drills, but have a heck of a time with the grip and control. I keep telling them, take out the glove. Rory with skates that are a problem. He'll get better, and did he ever. On the breakaway, we have two lanes of six rubber blocks, 12 to 14 inches apart. 
Then the deep dummy. Our cameras never caught one student who could think skating, puck handling, and push off at the same time. The course with just 33 skaters is empty. We need at least 50. That's the start of the breakaway and blocks. Next in the series, we'll show you the weave course. We do wonders for the students skating. What is, what is really amazing is what we do in the puck handling division. You know, the student in seven days with us will touch and carry the puck more, more than in the upcoming minor hockey league season. That's a fact. Stick the right leg, the right grip, you roll the wrist, and you carry the puck hour after hour through dozens and dozens of students and around pylons and, hey, with the puck all the time, you gotta get better. Watch. From the starting gate, you weave your way from pylon to pylon. If you can perform the skating skill, you have a green dot in your helmet, you carry a puck. Power. Now, if you're doing the skating skill without a puck, I'm faster with my feet. Look how much faster I go because I generate power. Pick one up right here. And like Reef, go through the blocks. Student carries the puck in front, rolls the wrist as he goes around the circle. The two nets are for students on the breakaway from the far end. If you have a pylon on your helmet, a red dot, you shoot at the goalie with a pylon on the net. We have a teacher directing traffic here. For the first couple of days, the students go to the breakaway gate instead of staying on the course, like Grief does. Goes around the circle, puts the puck back to the blocks, and continues down the white course to the other end. One, two, three, backwards. Look where you're going. The other end, we got four nets. Okay. Both those on the course and the breakaway have their own lane to the goalie there to shoot at. The girls in white and boys in blue shoot at the blue goalie. If you're red and have a pylon on your helmet, you find the right lane to shoot at the red goalie with a pylon on the net. And yes, we do the pylon. If you're finishing the course, you go to the breakaway. If you had your two breakaways, you go to the weave cars. Notice nobody was waiting at the gates. Just too much open ice. Not enough bodies. We want traffic. Like 50 moving obstacles to contend with on the cars. The red dots, folks, are teachers teaching skills. Skills beat systems every time. Our skating, puck handling, and passing drills are fun and learning experiences for students of any age. Most important, the teacher can find the slow learner and then has the time and space to go one-on-one -on -one with them. You know, the three skating and puck handling drills that we do, and this one is called the weed, are just great opportunities for staff and students to get together. Nobody gets left out. Everybody on staff is busy. And on a second goes by or a student goes by, that you can't see something, that you can go to him and help him. And it, it works. It works like heck. Staff is busy teaching. Kids are having fun. Kids are learning. And goal takers, whoo, shots, shots, shots. Everybody carries a buck. Everybody shoots a buck. Everybody thinks super should happen in every minor hockey league system in the country. This is not even close to the traffic we want. We want extra skaters. You know, there are extra problems for the learning. Kevin with Jordan, push with the heel. Chris with Taylor, Dean with Mitch. This young lady has got Taylor in the palm of her hand and that was no easy job. Totally has his attention and mine. He's listening and thinking. Chris is one reason Taylor improved so much. Mitch with the puck, watch. She stick handles with the puck and stays in the middle of the play. <laughs> Wouldn't have believed it. Kevin with Melissa. How to go around the pylon. Sit, push with the heel. Double pump sometimes. Pump, pump, that's it. Try it. It's a girl. <laughs> Amazing how these kids catch on.
Watch this. Watch Taylor sit and try to push with the heel. Chris stays with him. That Chris is teaching skills at its very best. Woodsy. Look at him sit. Woodsy with Brittany. How to carry a puck. Keep it out in front of you. Out in front. Roll the wrist. Keep it out in front. Not beside you. Out in front. That's it. Joined by Craig. Craig, you know by now is our student. Here he is with Stephanie. Trying to teach her how to carry the puck and sit down and push going around a pylon. 16 year old, a great teacher. This is Mitch and Taylor's Ride the Broom show. <laughs> really what one isn't. But we'll show you these two youngsters the first day. Couldn't stand up, couldn't step over, couldn't do nothing. And then we'll show you seven days later, absolutely amazing what the little devils did. I wouldn't have bet a nickel on it. After 30 minutes of intense balance drills, ride the broom exercise affords a little comic relief for the students. But the teacher is more than ever working on balance. Get your feet together, sit high in the stick, head back, get shoulder over the knee over the ball of the foot. Then turning around without falling is a piece of cake. I'll be crossing the blue line in a second with Mitch. He's having trouble. Cerise in the balance position. Again, shoulder over the knee, over the ball of the foot. Now her skates. Shoulder width apart. Weight in the middle of each blade. Perfect turn. By week's end, most students will be doing it. We play a game, little guys against the big guys. Taylor's on his belly there before he's out of the gate. Mitch, hopefully, will get to the blue line. Here they come. Watch Taylor, the little red guy. Can't get the stick between his legs. Down he goes. Mitch, too. Here's Gene with Lane, whose feet are way too far apart. Don't let go, Gene. For Pete's sakes, don't let go. Top of the circle, a couple of days later. Look at this, Mitch, feet together. Great turn. And Taylor, yeah folks, Taylor. Balanced, makes the turn. Super. Again, you can do anything with these guys. The fun continues. Willie jumps the pylons every which way. Sean the goalie. And look who's cruising through the top of the circle. Mitch in perfect form. Can't believe it, folks. Watch this guy. Taylor says, anything you can do, I can do better. Yahoo. Folks, we've been in this business a long time. And what we've said since day one to all the parents, if we can't improve your sons or daughters' skills by at least 50%, we'll give you your money back. Here, we'll show you. How we do it? No problem, piece of cake. Happens every time. We must create a learning atmosphere and when one-on-one, -on -one, control the student's mind. We have to sell that they're here to learn skills and above all, make it challenging and fun. Tessa and Taylor going through the stick handling blocks, both having normal problems. Next to last day, Taylor breaks away from dad and Mike. He's balanced on skates. The power leg returns to the ice under him. But we haven't taught him to keep his head up. Look out there, big brother. Here I come. Well, this is unbelievable when Taylor picks up the puck. Look at him. Roll the wrist, and the puck stays right in the middle of the blade. <laughs> we haven't come to shooting yet. Tessa has legs, hands, and brain all together. Great. We call this a one-foot slide and turn, and Craig does it very well, even with the puck. We start with the two-foot slide, then one foot, then the turn. 
and you make the turn without losing momentum. Cerise has problems getting the front leg off the ice and out of the way. But like most of the girls at the school, she works at it, works at it, works at it. She'll do it 10 times to a boy's four times. And this is the result. Two days later, one foot slide and turn with the puck. Great balance, great puck handling. We call this the back chop. It's how to develop power on the outside edge. To do it successfully, you need perfect posture. And look at that, shoulder over the knee, over the ball of the foot. Balance and body control, she has it. Listen to her cut ice. That's pretty, now watch this. Just by controlling her body and shifting her weight,